everyone, this is Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a striped dishcloth with a topper. Now this is super fun to make and you can make it in any colors that you want. The original pattern was written in Christmas colors, but I'm using non-Christmas colors so that you can see that you can make it in any colors that you like to go with any kitchen ensemble. Now the way the flap works is you have a buttonhole and a button, and you can button that over, say, your stove or your dishwasher, but you can also use the hole to hang it on a knob on a cabinet if that's the kind that you have. So it's very versatile and works for any way you want it to work. Now this is a free crochet pattern on my blog and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So what you're going to need to make one of my striped dish cloths is some cotton yarn. We're going to be using the Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie today in this variegated color it's called refreshing and we're also going to be using a solid teal and a solid white. You'll also need a button and your button needs to be about an inch to an inch and a half. You'll need a needle for weaving in those ends and you'll need a pair of scissors. Now the crochet hook that we're using is an H hook which is a 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. Now, if you don't have the new Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie, you can use any cotton yarns that you have. The red, white, and blue one I showed you earlier is made with Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. You can also use peaches and cream, sugar and cream, or any cottons that you have. I'm going to be making the dishcloth portion using the variegated and the white in stripes. I'm going to begin with my variegated. I'm going to make my slip knot and then I'm going to chain 33 chains. Now make sure that you don't chain too tightly because you don't want the edge of your towel to pucker up. So it's a good idea to make your initial 33 chains just a little bit loose. I've chained my 33 chains and we're going to begin stitching in the second chain from the hook. This is your first chain and this is your second. We're going to stitch a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then we'll stitch a single crochet in the next. So there's two single crochets. The next two stitches are going to be double crochets. Yarn over, go in the chain, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. <clears throat> go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. And then we'll stitch another double crochet in the next chain. And the way the row will work is we'll stitch two single crochets, one and two, and then we'll stitch two double crochets. See that little wave pattern? Two singles, two doubles, two singles, two doubles, We'll do this all the way across our chain. One single in the next two stitches and then one double in the next two stitches. The towel portion of our dish towel is stitched in the same pattern as the washcloth that we did the other day and I designed them to go together. That way you could make some washcloths and some dishcloths for a nice gift for someone that's maybe getting married or buying a brand new home 
are moving into their apartment for the first time or just for a birthday gift or maybe you just like me and need some new dish towels. It's nice to have a matching set. You see how that makes a wave pattern? So I'm going to con continue on across my row, stitching one single crochet in the next two, one double crochet in the next two, one single crochet in the next two, one double crochet in the next two, repeating all the way across our chain. So I finished this first row, two single, two double, all the way across. You should end with two double crochets at the end of your row. We're going to chain one and turn. And now we're going to repeat, only we're going to make sure that our single crochets are stitched in double crochets and our double crochets are stitched in single crochets. So since we have two double crochets, we're going to stitch a single in both of those. So we stitch right in that first double crochet and stitch a single, and then we'll stitch a single crochet in the next, and now we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two, because those next two stitches were singles. And that's the way that the pattern works. You stitch your singles in doubles and your doubles in singles. All right, so the next two stitches are doubles, so we're stitching singles in those. Now we're going to stitch two doubles, one in each of the next two stitches. Some more yarn here. There's my second single. Now we're going to stitch two doubles. Whoops, got a little splitty there. We'll try that again. There's a double and a double. Then we'll stitch a single and a single. And we'll do this all the way across this row. Two doubles, two singles, two doubles, two singles. All the way across. And at the end of this row, we're going to change colors because we're going to stripe with the white yarn. Now I'm going to be striping with the white, but I'm going to leave my variegated yarn attached. And we want to make sure that we join in our next color and then chain one. Now you can stripe it as many times as you want to, like the red, white, and blue one. I have three stripes of different colors, but we're going to be only striping with two colors. It's up to you how many times you want to stripe it, or if you want to do it all in one color is fine as well. So we're going to turn, and because we have those two double crochets, we're going to stitch a single crochet in those first two stitches, and then we're going to repeat what we've been doing. Two singles, two doubles, two singles, two doubles. So we have those two singles, so now we're going to put two doubles, one in each of the next two stitches, and then we'll repeat this across the row, like we did row two. Two singles, two doubles. See how that's standing out? Two singles, two doubles, all the way across, just like we did for row two, only we're using a different color yarn.
And like I said, you can stripe it however you want, or you can do it all in just one color, or you can use a variegated and do it all in variegated. It's totally up to you, and that's another neat thing about this pattern, is do it however you want. Match whatever kitchen or even bathroom. These work great to hang up for washing your hands after you, or drying your hands, I mean, after you've washed your hands in the bathroom. So, up to you how you want to do it. And I like to show people that you don't have to stick with the colors that you see in a pattern. You can do whatever colors that you like. Just make sure you stay within the weight of the yarn. All right, so now I'm at the end of this row, stitching those last two double crochets. I'm going to chain one and turn, and then I'm going to repeat another row of white exactly like we did the previous row. Single crochet in the first two, double crochet in the next two, and on across this row, just repeating that. Because my stripes on this pattern consist of two rows of each color. I finished that second row of white, and now I'm going to bring back in my blue variegated. I'm going to leave my white attached, and I'm going to bring back in my blue variegated, and we're going to carry those yarns on the side, but don't worry. When we come back and put a single crochet trim on, we'll stitch right over those, and you won't even be able to see them. All right, so I'm going to snug that down and do my chain one and turn. And now I'm going to repeat two rows of the variegated and then two rows of white until I've reached 20 rows altogether. Because that's how tall our dishcloth will be. So I'm going to begin with those two single crochets. then two double crochets, two single crochets, and I'll repeat this, stitching two rows of the variegated, two rows of the white, alternating the rows until I have 20 rows. I finished two more rows of the variegated and I went ahead and brought my white yarn back in and I just wanted to make sure that you understand that we're carrying the yarn on the side, we're not cutting our yarn, and that we need a total of 20 rows for the body portion of our dish towel, like this yellow one. We need 20 rows. So whether you're striping it, keeping it solid, or however you're doing it, the body portion of your dish towel needs to be 20 rows long. All right, so I'm gonna continue doing my striping, two variegated, two white, until I have 20 rows for the dish towel portion of my hanging dish towel. I've stitched my 20 rows, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and I'm finished with my white yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that off, or cut that off, I should say. <clears throat> and you'll notice that I have the yarns carried across here, but don't panic. We're going to take care of that in just a few minutes. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to join back in my variegated yarn because I'm going to use that as my trim as well. 
So I'm going to chain one and turn my project or my tail around. And I'm going to stitch one single crochet across. And this is going to give us something to work in when we add the topper. So we want just a nice even row of single crochet across. And there we go. And it doesn't matter whether it's a single crochet or a double crochet that you're stitching in. We just want one single crochet in each of the stitches across. Once we've stitched across one single crochet in each stitch, we're going to turn our work and we're going to single crochet down this side. We're going to go ahead and put two more single crochets in this corner so that it eases around that corner nicely. And then we're going to stitch single crochets evenly down the side. And that just means we try to space out the single crochets. And when I'm doing this, I try to go in the stitches themselves and not the holes, if at all possible, because it just makes a much neater looking edge. And you have to just kind of look at it, make sure they're close together, but not too close, and that there isn't too much space in between. You can see I'm trying to stitch in the stitches that are on the end of each row. Just moving down the side. There we go. And sometimes it's easier and sometimes it's harder to get that crochet hook in there. And this is just going to give us a nice edge for our towel. So I'm going to continue working down to this next corner. I stitch down evenly down that side. We're at the next corner and again we're going to stitch three single crochets in the corner just again so that it moves nicely around that edge. And now we're at the bottom and we're just going to stitch again evenly across and this is where our beginning chain was. And so we want to make sure that we stitch nice and evenly working across those stitches. making sure our stitches are even, not too close, not too far apart. <clears throat> and we'll just work right across this bottom chain until we get to this next corner. I worked across the bottom of the towel and now again I'm going to put three single crochets in that corner and now we're working up the side where we carried across that yarn and we do it the same we just want to make sure that we go around and grab those stitches that we or those pieces of yarn I should say that we left there and just go around it so that we're grabbing it with our single crochets. And see, you can't even tell that we carried our yarn. And so we'll just work our way right back up to the top of our towel.
So I finished up that last side. I've placed those three single crochets in that corner and I'm going to join to the first single crochet and we're going to tie off. I'm going to pull that through to the back side and then we'll have those two pieces of yarn to weave in. And now you have a towel that's ready to be made into a hanging towel. All right, so let's take our towel that we just made and we're gonna fold it in evenly like this. Now, you can pin it if you want to, to keep it together, but I just turn it over on the other side, making sure it's together. And we're going to be using our teal color for the topper of the towel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in these first two single crochet stitches and pull the teal in. And I'm going to chain three. And that counts as our first double crochet. So now I'm going to stitch 16 stitches or actually 15 stitches because our chain three counted as our first double crochet. We're going to be stitching our double crochets going through both sides. So we'll yarn over, go through the stitch on this side and the stitch on this side and stitch that double crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven. There we go. And there's eight. And now we're going to stitch the other side. So we'll go through there, one, through those last two single crochets. There we go. Our chain three counts is our first stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 double crochets. All right, so we're going to chain three and turn. <clears throat> Our chain three counted is our first double crochet, so we'll double crochet in the next stitch and in each stitch across. And this will again give us 16 double crochets.
make sure that you put a double crochet in the top of that chain three that counts as our first double crochet of the previous row. So again, we have 16 stitches counting our chain three. We have two rows and we need to do three more rows exactly the same. Chain three, turn one double crochet in each stitch for three more rows. Now we have the five rows of double crochet and we're going to begin our decrease stitches. So we're going to turn our work. We only chained one. We're going to yarn over, go in the first double crochet and pull up a loop. Then we're going to go in the next double crochet and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook instead of three. You'll yarn over and go through those three loops, then you'll yarn over and go through the last two. And what we've done is we've decreased from two double crochets to one on this end. And now we're going to put one double crochet in each stitch across. And then we'll stitch another set of double crochet decrease together, or stitching two double crochets together. Sometimes it's called a decrease stitch, and sometimes it's called stitching two together. You can decrease using any stitch, single, double, half double, triple, when you stitch them together. All right, so I'm stitching one double crochet in each stitch across until I reach those last two double crochets. We're going to yarn over, go in the next stitch, and pull up a loop. We're going to go in the top of that chain three that counts as our double crochet, and pull up a loop. There we go. Yarn over, go through those three, yarn over, and go through those two. We're going to chain one and turn, and we're going to repeat this. Now we have 14 stitches instead of 16, and we're going to repeat what we just did. Yarn over, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go in the first three, yarn over and go through the two. And then again, we'll double crochet across until we reach the last two. In this row, we're going from 14 stitches to 12. And we're going to continue doing this until we decrease down to eight double crochets. There we go, got a little string cut. So I've double crocheted across and we have two stitches left. We're going to yarn over, go in the first stitch, pull up a loop, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the three, yarn over, and go through the two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we've gone from fourteen to twelve. Chain one and turn. And we're going to do this again. We're going to go from twelve to ten. So yarn over, go in the first stitch, then we go in the next stitch, we've got four loops, yarn over, go through the first three, yarn over and go through the two, single crochet across, take whatever. Now we're going to double crochet across,
till we reach to those last two stitches again. One more, and then we'll stitch a decrease. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Chain one and turn. And this is our last decrease, and you can see the edges coming in. All right, so this is our last one or I should say our last row. We have to decrease on both ends. So there's our first decrease. All right, and now our last decrease, and we've made our row down to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we decreased from 16 stitches down to eight. All right, so after we've decreased down to eight, we're going to chain three. We're going to turn. The chain three here counts as our first stitch, so we're going to go in the next stitch and just stitch a simple row of double crochets. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double crochets. Now on this next row, we're going to make the buttonhole. So we'll chain three, get around there, and turn. We'll place a double crochet in the next two stitches. We're going to chain two, and then we're going to skip two, and then place a double crochet in the last three. One, two, three, and see how we form that hole? All right, we're going to chain one, and turn. And now we're going to single crochet in these first three double crochets. We're going to place three single crochets in the chain two space. And then we're going to stitch a single crochet in those three double crochets. And now we've formed the buttonhole. So the last thing we need to do to the top of our towel is we're going to single crochet down this edge, we're going to single crochet across, and then we'll single crochet back up and tie off. And that just gives us a nice edge. So we'll just start single crocheting like we did on the other ones, just evenly single crochet because we want the side of our towel and the towel topper to have a nice even smooth edge. So we'll just single crochet down the side and I like to stay within the color that I'm doing the topper, but you can change colors if you want to. Okay. 
All right, so I've reached down to the towel. And what we're going to do is this part's just a little tricky, but what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet across and we're going to put our single crochet stitches right in the double crochet stitches moving across. So here's my first one. And then I'll put my hook in and stitch my single crochet. Just moving right across the front of the towel. Put your hook around and make your single crochet. And see how that's making just a nice edge? Going right around those double crochet stitches. You're still stitching a single crochet, you're just stitching them around the double crochet that's there. Now I've done that last double crochet stitch. You can see I stitched right along, stitching around those double crochet stitches with single crochets. And now I'm just going to work my way back up the side of the towel topper. Just stitching single crochets so we have a nice smooth edge. All right, I'm going to join to that first single crochet. Cut my yarn and tie off. All right, we'll have to weave that in. I'm just going to pull it to the back so it's out of the way. And then we'll use our needle and weave that in. But that's what the top of the towel should look like. So this is our front of our towel. This is the back where the opening is. <clears throat> and the last thing we need to do is attach our button. So we're just going to take a piece of the same yarn, thread that onto our needle, I put it at about the third row. And one thing that's very important is to make sure that you're going through a stitch and not a hole. And I always make a loop first, it just for some reason, working with cotton, I like doing that. And then we'll just go through our needle, through the button, going through stitches, so we get a nice, good, attached button. Doing that several times. Now we want this button to stay on. So I usually tie two like that and then I do that where I wind it around my finger and pull the threads through. There we go. Now I do need to have 
a couple minutes to weave in these extra ends. But the way that works, there's our button. We can either hang this on the knob of our cabinet or we can hang it on the dishwasher or the oven or the refrigerator. Let's hide that string for a second so I can weave that in. And that's the way that the towel will look. So whether you make them with several stripes or two stripes, it doesn't matter. These are great towels with toppers to give as a gift or to keep for yourself. So that's my striped cotton towel with a topper.